Attention, Star Cadets! Stand by for action! Captain Paxar says, prepare to travel time and soar through space while facing the worst villains of the past and the future! Stand by for Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour! Star Cadets, I, Captain Paxar, am speaking to you from the secret headquarters of the Interdimensional Peace Force. Today's mission is as follows. Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and Professor Sarkov must face the fury of Zaldu, the mighty ruler of the subsurface people. Stand by for action, as Flash Gordon must survive the Subworld Revenge! cultivated and ruled by a civilization of people existing upon its surface, harbors another civilization deep in its very core. Ruled by Zaldu, a despot, who, determined to break free of the confines of a subsurface kingdom, constructed a machine to blast a passage to the surface with the raging fires of the Earth's heart. But Flash Gordon, with the help of Dale Arden and Dr. Sarkov, destroyed the machine and escaped back to their subsurface ship, the Earthworm before they were consumed by the fires that their own destruction unleashed. It was many months later when Dr. Zarkov, back in his laboratory at GBI headquarters, perfected a video machine capable of penetrating the Earth's stratus to determine just how great was the destruction in Zaldu's kingdom. Have you seen any signs of life down there, Dr. Zarkov? Not yet, Dale. The passages are clear. There's no signs of destruction at all. But that's impossible. Why, when we escaped, Flames were licking at our heels, explosions breaking out, walls falling down. That's what's worrying me. Everything seems to have been cleaned up, yet there's no sign of life. At this very moment, 1,500 miles inside the Earth's core, two of the strange creatures of the subworld gaze into a flickering screen. How much longer before I, Zaldu, can gaze upon the outer world? Forgive me, Martinus, but until I find a known magnetic channel to the surface, it isn't possible. I will wait no longer. I will see. Look, here it is. The surface world. What are they? Surface people. Maybe they are another kind of surface people than those who come here. They move. But yet they stand still. Strange. Strange. And what is that which they stand in? And all of that surface behind them? It is another part of the surface world, Your Mightiness. It looks solid as though one can walk upon it. Oh, I would see more of the surface world. I will conquer and rule. What can that be? I do not know. Your Mightiness, even in my wildest dream of what is on the surface, did I imagine a sight like this. Why? All is in such order, like the parts of a machine. The open corridors that lead from one place to another are like wires that go from one part of the machine to the other. And the things that move, can they be other surface people? 
lot of all that I can see. Nothing has a power that I, I do hold in my hands. All that we look at, I can destroy once we blast through with the blasting fires of the Earth's core. I'm going to try and scan through the chambers to see if I can find the fire chamber where the blasting machine was located. If it's still there, I'll bet it's a mess. Deal. Adjust the magnetic rectifier up four cycles, quickly. Up four cycles? What is it, Doctor? See for yourself. It's Saldo's fire chamber. I can't understand it. We saw it destroyed with our own eyes. That Sutherland whipping a slave. Did you recognize him? It's Zaldo's lieutenant. I thought surely he was dead too. If he lived through it, Zaldo could be alive today too. Well, if he is, Doctor, he won't rest until he's broken out and destroyed the surface people. Contact Flash and Commissioner Herrick on the intercom. Report what we've seen. Yes, sir. Oh, and tell them to check the seismograph readings. If Zaldu is ready to blast through to the surface again, there should be strong tremors, just as there were before. In the same vicinity, do you think? Mm, possibly. Probably. The volcanic fissure they found the last time would be the logical place for them to start. If they do start blasting, Doctor, what can we do to stop them? Are we just coming to that? After you've talked to Flash and Herrick, contact the earthworm hangar. She's to be made ready for descent within the hour. Get me GBI headquarters, please. So what it looks like, at least to Dr. Zarkoff and me, is that the subsurface men are getting ready to try another blast through to the surface. Dale, are you sure? After what we saw with our own eyes, the explosion, the fire. I can't believe it. Flash, there's no doubt about it. The fire chamber is still there and the blaster content rebuilt. There haven't been any tremors showing up on the seismograph heavier than usual. Well, they haven't started blasting yet, but once they got the content over the fire hole, that's what it will show. Just a second, Dale. Alan, put the finder board on the subsurface. Let's see what the earth tremor patterns look like at the moment. Nothing shows, Dale, but small tremors. When does Dr. Zarkoff expect the blasting to start? How near ready are they? They're almost ready now. Come here, Dale, look. Call back, Flash. What's he trying to make that poor slave do? Place the conduit pipe over the fire hole. The fire seems so small, Doctor. There's not enough blasting power in that to burn through 1,500 miles of iron and rock. No, of course not, Dale. All we see are the flames that have forced their way through the damper opening. Well, I was just wondering. Otherwise, the whole machine would blow up again. Within the pipe, they've constructed a small derrick. When the pipe is in place, they drop the derrick down, lift the damper, and let the full fire blast escape. We saw it work in reverse when we were in the fire chamber, remember? As we entered, the full force of the blast was shooting up through the conduit pipe. Flash pulled on the lever controlling the derrick, fighting the terrific pressure of the escaping flames. Slowly, he lowered it, until finally, the damper completely covered the fire hole. Now I understand. If we had left the damper open a bit, the machine would never have exploded. Exactly. What a horrible moment that was. The pressure building up so that we knew it would explode any second. While outside, the subsurface guards were trying to break through the door to save their king, Zaldu. And speaking of Zaldu, here he is in person, alive. By what miracle I can't imagine, but alive. And ready to give the order to burn through to the surface. Get Flash and Herrick back. The tremor should start again almost immediately. Deputy Commissioner Herrick. There are no more tremors. Any quake areas you haven't covered, Alan? No, sir. Eric, yet? The concert pipe is in place, Commissioner. Watch for major tremors to start almost immediately. Where? Your guess is as good as ours. Well, why don't you try the Oregon area where they tried breaking through before? Nothing, Dale. Tell Sir Book is even quieter than usual. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. <laughs> Commissioner, now, is there anything? Zaldo has just given the order to blast. Yes, Dale, yes. The strongest tremors we've ever registered. 
With a four-point crate like that, the entire area will be demolished. You're sure the roof won't have queued up and ready to go, Dale? Yes, sir. We gave the order ten minutes ago. Tell Dale and Zarkoff I'll meet them then. Okay. Pleasure's on the way to the roof room. But you and Dr. Sarko wait for me. I want to see you before you take off. Okay, Commissioner. Oh, order evacuation. And after the red line up to the quake area. And uh, order every GBI trip trip within one hour flight time to sit down there and help pull those people out. Yes, sir. What is all that paraphernalia you're jamming into the bag, Doctor? Oh, the supply of anti-heat serum and plaster gel to protect us within and without. Three atomic demagnetizers. One for each of us, and a supply of oxygen concentrate tubes in case we run into some poisoned air and have to use our space helmets. With a few more items, you'll be able to open up an electro-medical hardware store. <laughs> Just taking that ounce of prevention will allow us to keep that lovely face of yours alive and ever lovely. Thank you, sir. Now, where is this fewer gadget you've got? I want to see this lure man's longer for myself. Right over there, Commissioner. There'll be a good girl. Take that down to the ship for me, will you? I want to show Commissioner Herrick how this works. Oh, so long, Commissioner. I'll see you in Hades. Oh, the shoe's on the other foot, Dale. I'll be seeing you there. Touché. Bye. Good luck. Zoldu. Let me see this mighty Zoldu. From the glint in your eye, Commissioner, if looks could kill, you'd be our best weapon against Zoldu. Very funny. Is he there? Not in the fire chamber. See if he's in his throne chamber. Uh, there he is. That? That skinny worm-eaten corpse is Zoldu? That wants to conquer us? And can, Commissioner. In his hands, he holds a power that's greater than any weapon we possess. The power of the Earth's fiery core. If he can bring this fire to the surface, he will unleash it, enveloping the entire surface until the Earth is a ball of flame like the sun. Hey, he can really do this? Unless we can stop him, he will do this. I must go. At ease, Star Cadets! Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour will be back in a moment! Stand by for action, Star Cadets! We now return to Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour! That completes the checklist, Flash. Good. Now we're missing just one item, Dr. Zarkov. What's holding him up? He's introducing Commissioner Herrick to Zaldu. I got it. All set? Buckle in and we'll take off. Let the joyride begin. Well, Doctor? Start a snort, sir. Turn on the audio. The surface men will come. Now that we have started blasting through, they will come, but they can't stop me. Nothing can stand between me and my ambition. I will have their lives for what they did to me. I will crush them with a weight as great as a whole world pressing down upon them. Contact the earthworm. Warn Flash that he's digging right into a trap. Tell him to turn back right away. I... I can't, sir. We can't contact them. What do you mean you can't? You must! But sir, try to understand. Uh, the earthworm drives through the straight. The friction is terrific. Now, so what? The friction creates a heavy electrostatic field around them that destroys every sound wave trying to penetrate it. We're completely cut off from them. Look. Surface people drive closer and closer by the minute. We are ready for them. Nothing must go wrong this time. Do you hear? Do you hear? Oh, it's in readiness. I have seen to it myself, Your Mightiness. Tell me, tell me what you have prepared. Tell me again. I must be sure. Tell me. When surface ship reaches point plus one, we cease blasting operations to surface. That's my order. Go on. Then full power of earth fire will be channeled to magnetic activator in the chamber of iron. Yes, yes, then speak. The surface ship will be pulled into the chamber of iron and locked into it electromagnetically. 
Yes. Then I will have my revenge. All the fiery power of the Earth's core concentrated to crush them in a magnetic mind until they are dust. <laughs> Our last possible chance to warn them. Gone. What do you mean? I was hoping that when they reached the subsurface world and stopped, we could get through to them. Of course. The electrostatic field that is isolating them now would be no more, and our radio wave could get through. But now the magnetic activator will isolate them too. It is hopeless. The flash out of the way. But no other means of deciding to stop Saldo. He can blast this way out. Then heaven help us. There's no weapon that can stop him from destroying us. 1,920 kilometers. Outside temperature? 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. Perfectly normal. Timing and exhaust blast in good order in all jet chambers. This has turned into a joyride. What a contrast to our last trip to the Earth's core. What's your plan when we get there, Flash? I know one thing. Zaldo's not going to stop blasting just because we ask him to. There's only one thing to do, Dale. Capture Zaldo himself and bring him to the surface. Then try to find someone in the subsurface kingdom who is willing to rule and live in peace with us. That won't be an easy job. Capturing Zaldo, I mean. I've got a plan, Doctor. If I can steer a direct course into Zaldo's chamber, we can take him by surprise. <laughs> But I'm trying to. It's no Strange. All jet chambers working perfectly. We veered 20 degrees. As far as I can see on a fast check, there's nothing wrong with the earthworms. That means that a power even stronger than our anti jet motors is pulling us into. I don't know what. He! He! Go out of this! The air have hit point one! have been turned by the magnetic activator. It is as I wish. It is as I wish. See, the earth fire is now channeled to the magnetic activator in the chamber of iron. The chamber of iron. That will be soon that chamber of death. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Herrick, the tremors have stopped. I know, I know. But they'll start again, Ellen. Very soon. And worse than ever. Don't stop evacuation. Poor flesh. Dale. That's the sarcasm. And soon. Poor us. What? Pressure. Falling. Yes. Dead. Must. More. Can't we do something with my very anti-magnetizer inside one for each of us? Can you make it? Account? What is it? Speak. Three hundred pullers. Enough. Enough for the time. Let them suffer. Let them feel the hard muscles strain to keep them alive. In the 
dream of iron when the pressure comes from all sides. Then, Your Majesty, they will feel the revenge of Zaru. Yes, from all directions. It will tear and pull and squeeze every time. Look, look. Each second they draw closer. Even at this moment, no living thing could move a finger. Engineers to redirect the firepower to the escape ship. This time, nothing can stop us. Go, no, do as I order. And now, now I will taste my revenge. I will see what is left of these miserable surface people. Not even their dust is left. <laughs> this is mine now. With this, shall do the mighty will ride the triumph to the surface. And sooner than you think, sound little boy. But you can't be alive. There's a distrusting man for you. Can't even believe his own eyes. I think you deserve an explanation, Zaldu. You see, I knew you wouldn't try and destroy us with heat again. Our plaster gel defeated that try the last time. So he prepared us for your attempt to crush us with magnetic force. Next to heat. The greatest power in this subsurface world is your magnetized iron. <laughs> I thought that somehow you would try to use it against us. Lucky for us, you brought these Atto demagnetizers along, Dr. Zakoff. I won't say better luck next time, Zaldu. You won't have one. But now you have a parting message to send to your subjects. It's short and sweet. Tell them to turn off the fire blaster. Or the mighty Zaldo will be mighty sorry. Attention. Attention. This is Zaldo the mighty. I order you to turn the fire from the surface channel. Do as I order. Well done, 
Lone Star Cadets, the first phase of our mission was a rousing success. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour will be back in a moment. Welcome back, Star Cadets. I, Captain Paxar, will now brief you on the second phase of our mission. That intrepid explorer in time and space, Captain C. Rowe and his crew travel back to the Earth year 1180 to verify the existence of a legendary figure. Stand by for action as Captain C. Rowe meets Robin Hood. Captain Zero, research explorer in time and space. into time. 1400, 1300, 12, stand by. 1180, cut the cycle reactor and lock it. Level the power, Tetro. Yes, sir. All right, Jet, stand by to activate the view screen. Yes, sir. Bring up the plate power. Increase the target voltage. There you are. Sherwood Forest, England, in the year 1180. Why? See if I can find Robin Hood? Cut the view screen, Jeff. Can I? I'm not even sure Robin Hood really lived. And if the Sheriff of Nottingham could never find him, what makes you think you can? If Robin Hood actually lived in Sherwood Forest, I'll find him. Okay, hop into the chamber. Yes, sir. Oh, and Jeff, be careful. Stay out of trouble. Yes, sir. Boy, maybe Robin Hood will actually let me join his band for a while. Stand by to materialize. Ready, Jet? There he goes. Stop. Maybe I'd better keep track of him on the view screen, just in case. The sweet love season of the year with a ninny, ninny, nanny. Who? Who art thou? Robin Hood, men call me. And where goest thou, infant? To the shooting match at Nottingham Town. A prize has been offered. The shooting match? <laughs> and dost thou, a mere infant with scarce a fuzz on thy chin, expect to shoot with good stout men? I'll wager I can best thee at any time. Oh? Wouldst thou care to wager? Uh... Twenty pounds? Aye. Name thy mark. Look thou. At the glade's end is a herd of deer. I'll wager not one of them canst thou hit. Verily. 
Certainly, the wager is mine. Nay, tis none of thine. A lucky shot, tis all. I won it fairly by thine own terms. Yeah. Well, get thee gone. Thou hast killed one of the king's deer. By the laws of our land, thine ears should be shaven close to thy head. My twenty pounds, please. Aye, infant. I'll give thee twenty pounds on thy head. Infant am I. Now my twenty pounds, please. My men will soon give thee twenty lashes. I leave thee, sire. But I will return. Not if I can help it. What ill luck spoils my aim? You say that I am no archer. Watch thy bonnet and be glad tis not thy head. Help! Help! I've been coming! After him, then! He tried to kill me that way! Man, I'd better get out of here. Oh! There's another! After him! This way! Push them out, men! Shoot first, ask questions later! trouble in Sherwood Forest. I'm going back in time. What happened? I lost track of him on the view screen and the sheriff's deputies are after him. Stand by to bring us back on signal. Yes, sir. Spread out, men. They must be around here somewhere. He must have come through here, tripped over this log, and run across that bridge. manner of manner thou. I'm Captain Zero, and I'm looking for the me. The Sheriff of Nottingham must be sore pressed to have the likes of thee in his service. I have nothing to do with the Sheriff, my friend. Who are you? Little John, men call me. Right-hand man of Robin Hood. Robin Hood? Where is Robin Hood? He might... Oh! Thou dost not trick me into showing me Robin Hood's hiding place. Now get thee gone before I crack thy skull. Look, Little John, I only want to cross over this bridge. Now, would you please be good enough to let me go by? I let no one the likes of thee go by. Oh? Stop. Hold! We've gone far enough in this direction. Signal them in. We'll circle back. Aye. No, they can't be far off. We'll find them. Robin Hood and his friend. Criminy, I'm lost. I don't know which way to go. If I could just find Robin Hood's camp. I'm warning thee, whoever thou art. One more step, and over you go. <laughs> thou art a knave and a culprit. Thou didn't trick me at mine own game. So long, little John. Enjoy your swim. <laughs> Nowhere twixt here in Canterbury Town is there a man could do to me what he has done. Strange indeed, this Captain Zero. Robin Hood should know of this. What is Zero doing here? Something is amiss. Hold! Look now, the bonnet of Robin Hood's companion. He must have come through here and, and crossed John Bridge. <sighs> this way, men. Now we're on the trail. Shoot them on sight. Jack! 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 Jack, where are you? Jack!
get into the last of us. What think thee, Friar Tuck? Methinks we should find this man in strange clothing who tossed you off the bridge. Methinks he is a spy for the Sheriff of Nottingham and should be captured before he discovers our hideout. What of the other deputies in the forest? Oh, they are too slow and stupid. It is the stranger, I fear. He thinks we should steal forth now, one by one, and search him out. Aye. Whoever finds him will blow two blasts on his horn to bring the others. Aye. 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 Yes, you. What in the world are doing here? Hold, Violet! Hold, Violet! Or a grey goose shaft will find thy back! Man, if I could just capture that spy, maybe Robin Hood would make me a lieutenant. Oh! I got him! Fire Tuck! Thou! Well, pull it out! There. Oh. oh, and from now on, look before thou shootest. If my breeches were not of leather, I'd be in a sorry plight. As it is, I shall be unable to sit down for a fortnight. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were the spy. Aye. We must continue the search. But thou goest in that direction, I go in this. Cry came from about here, but certainly no sign of Jet. At ease, Star Cadets! Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour will be back in a moment! Stand by for action, Star Cadets! We now return to Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour! Oh, hold! Thee again! Why, well, you see... How long hast thou been in Robin Hood's band? Verily, I... I'm sorry! Oh, never mind. Look now. I will search uh, from here to the creek. Thou searchest forward to the oak grove. Yes, sir. I mean, I. And look sharp. He thinks the spy is close by. Well, I. Wish I had a ray gun instead of these arrows. What sayest thou? Oh, I, I just said I'm not very good with these arrows. Uh, aye. On second thought, uh, mayhap uh, we should search together. Only thou goest first. How oh, now? What's this? Verily, the spy's jerking. Friar Tuck, what goest? Where be the spy? Dost thou recognize this jerkin, little John? Aye. The spy's jerkin. I would know it anywhere. Now look ye all. The spy who wore this jerkin may now be clothed as one of us. And if he be found in Robin Hood's band, he'll wish he'd never seen this land. Aye. 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 This way, men! This way! I would give up this job. <laughs> Whoever he is, he must now be wearing a dress of Lincoln green. Aye, forsooth thou art right, Briar Tuck. This spy must now be disguised as one of our own band. Why else would his jerkin be hidden beneath the bush? I will, Scarlet. And methinks I know the one this jerkin will fit. 
the newcomer who calls himself Jet. Ah, verily, he is indeed a strange one. Mm. But how could one of his size best little John at the bridge? I know not. But methinks we should seek him out and try on the jerkin. Aye. And if the jerkin fits, you. we will say a proper prayer for his uh, departed soul. I am with it. thee, Doc. Good. Uh, thou goest in yon direction. I go in this. Whoever finds him first, whistle like a nightingale. Aye. Criminy. Now everybody's after me. All right, men. Back to the other side. <laughs> Sherwood Forest and fast. Hold, my young friend. I fear thou hast reached the end of thy trail. But... Oh, no, one of the sheriff's deputies. Thou art indeed a mighty one for thy size. Well, I... And surely thou canst be no spy for the sheriff, since thou didst fail one of his men. Hold, they come again. Hide quickly. I'll lead them away. This way, hurry. I saw two of them. On your feet. And don't try any tricks. Well, leave me thinking I've had it. On your feet. You're my prisoner. Aye, forsooth. I think I'll live longer as a prisoner than as a deputy. Drop my weapon. Else this sword cleave thee in two. Uh, good work. Uh, this makes two of them I have captured. <laughs> the sheriff will reward me well. The great little John is already in the hands of the posse. I'll take this dangerous one back to Nottingham. You join the others and take care of Little John. Verily, here we go as again. And thou best move along without delay. If thou wouldst live another day, march thou. Hold. Keep thy hands up. Robert. Aye. Thou must be the stranger of whom Little John spoke. Didst thou not knock him off yon bridge? Yes, he refused to let me cross. <laughs> How merry bite it must have been. Would that I had seen it. You mind if I lower my hand? Oh, keep thy hands up. Prior Tuck says thou art in league with the sheriff who is seeking my hiding place. What canst thou say for thyself? Prior Tuck is wrong. I'm looking for my young assistant, Jet. Jet? Yes, do you know him? Why, he appeared near my camp, half clothed and half torn. But the sheriff's deputy is close behind. I bid him join my band beneath the greenwood tree. I've not seen him since. Maybe he's still there. Aye, follow me. Robin! The sheriff's deputies have captured little John and the lad called Jet. When? Even now they leave the forest for Nottingham. Then we must gather the band and storm the jail. Wait. You're taking a needless risk. We risk for each other that we might live in peace. Wait a minute. Let me handle this. I think I can rescue both little John and Jet without anyone getting hurt. No, but how? Just give me one hour and you'll have your answer. But... Thirty minutes. Very well. But if thou shouldst fail, the sheriff will show thee no mercy. I know. I'd fairly well then. Though I fear thou wilt fail, how can one man storm Nottingham jail? So, the great little John. 
Robin Hood's right hand man. Come, Barnett, tell me a merry tale of thy strength and prowess. Thou wilt live to regret this. Robin Hood will make thee wish thou had never been born. Thee and thy Robin Hood. Before this day is over, thee, Robin Hood, and his entire band will be swinging from my favorite tree. But why? What have we done? What hast thou done? Thou hast obstructed justice, that's what. Thou hast prevented me from taking people's farms and property when they fail to pay their taxes. Thou dost know they cannot pay. Thy taxes are far too high. My word is law in this county. The taxes will be as high as I wish. Thy Robin Hood even giveth money to the poor so they may keep their lands. If it were not for him, half this county would be mine and the people in it by slaves. I would be rich, rich. Do you call that justice? Aye. Justice is for those who can avoid it. You're insane. Oh, use thy tongue wisely, lad. Thou wilt not use it long. Keep thy hands off of him, thou coward. He thinks I've had enough of thy insolence, little John. Thou hast spoken thy last. Hold! Who art thou? How did thou get past my guard? How dare thee question the king's official? Hast thou been so lax in thy duties that thou dost not recognize our new uniforms? I did not know there had been a change. I have come for thy prisoners. My prisoners? Let me see thy papers. Papers? And since when does an official of the court need papers? But, but... I had enough of thy insolence. Or shall I report thee to the king? No, no, better I have had enough trouble at court. Then release thy prisoners. But, sire... Thy keys. Or must I report thee for disobeying orders? Very well, but this is most irregular. Captain Zero, what are thou doing? Hold! Captain! So thou didst think to trick me. I'll show thee whoever thou art. <laughs> Help! Guard! Guard! Out the back way. Hurry, little dog. I am thankful. Hurry this way, quickly! Petro, take us back! Hold! Outside, quickly! Get the other guards around the jail! They can't be far! How now? These, these shackles are still locked! But how? Repair thy ways, thou tyrant knave. Else this day's sun sets on thy grave. Thank Robin Hood! Guards! 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 Why, that sheriff really does sound insane now. He is. Insane with greed for money and power. But Robin Hood will take care of him. Colin. Robin Hood spent his whole life fighting for justice, didn't he? Yes, Jess. Like many others. And the fight for justice still goes on. The captain will debrief you in a moment when Captain Paxaw's Star Cadet Hour returns. Mission accomplished, Star Cadets. You've all served with valor and honor. Flash Gordon, Captain C. Rowe, and I, Captain Paxar, of the Interdimensional Peace Force, salute you. You may now stand down until we meet again at the appointed time coordinates, when we will again undertake a daring mission through time, space, and alternate dimensions. Until then, Star Cadets, always remember, keep the peace.